Today, I wanted to talk about something that I think is extremely important and uh, doesn't get discussed much at all. Um, I found throughout the years that uh, a lot of teachers and students just actually sort of avoid it and you know move move on or around uh, the idea. Um, plurality forces you to take a deep dive into the major scale and understand that when you build chords from it, a lot of them don't work and are not acceptable in modern harmony. And so uh, if you're at an intermediate level, you may have already built let's say, triads up from each note of the major scale and four part. And um, when I was younger, I, I realized uh, one of my teachers, that's sort of where we stopped at four part chords. And then after that, I was learning just arbitrary shapes mm -hmm. here and there. Here's a major nine chord, here's an 11 chord. And, and so there was no real discussion about uh, certain things especially regarding the one chord in a key, which uh, if we talk about its stack or chord family, which is the way we think of it in fretboard, freedom as a family, that would be the one chord in C would be C major 13 sharp 11. Okay. Well, that implies something other than the C major scale. And uh, this has been sort of the bane of my existence of 40 years of teaching, is teaching beginning and beginning intermediate uh, students the very first chord type that you want to work on, which is major, and explaining that there's two scales that need to be considered in, in that chord family. Uh, and so... Uh, I'll just go back for a second. When I was younger and very much my focus was on rock and, and progressive rock, and uh, I, like everybody else, I'd go out and get a songbook and I'd you know, try to get in the head of some of the writers uh, that I liked. And so at least 50% of these tunes, I'd look at them and they'd be in a key. I'll just be in C here for, for simplicity's sake. And you know, it's everything's going along fine, whatever, and then all of a sudden there's a chord, D flat nine. What? And if you have no harmony background, you just look at that, and you know it might as well be a completely different language. What? What is that doing there? You know, where where did the the writer come up with that that chord type? Um, Another example that's really common, this is even better, is uh, your C major 7 to E7, right, to A minor 7. We've heard that in everything from folk tunes, country, rock, ballads, and, you know, if you add on extensions, then we can talk about smooth jazz and jazz jazz. And so this idea has been around for, for decades but what is E7 to the key of C major? It's, it has nothing to do with the key of C major. And uh, so that's just the word <clears throat> is arbitrary, right? These chords just seem arbitrary to uh, anybody who has a very little background in harmony and theory. So... Um, what the beautiful thing about plurality is it uh, helps us to boil everything down to two, five, one. And so if you're more in the beginning stage, you may be already yelling, well, what about the four chord, the three chord, the six chord, the seven chord? Well, that's what what plurality does. It takes care of those and, and gives you an idea of how you can think of those chords in a different way 
as all being what we call upper extensions of, again, either a two chord, a five chord, or a one. Why would we want to do that? In improvisation, uh, when we're looking at a, a, a chart and these chords are, you know, could be flying by at 150, 200 BPM, and if here's just two five one four. Well, if I'm going D Dorian, G Mixolydian, C Ionian, F Lydian, I'm in big trouble. Those chords are already gone by the time I figured out what the scale uh, source is for it. So, what world class players, professional players. Uh, improvisers do is they look at a chart and and start looking at key centers, tonal centers, and <clears throat> that way uh, they this is all in the same key, and now they 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 understand what the scale source is for that key, and they can then use their thinking to do more important things like target or phrase or what whatever it is okay so um now it also we're i'm just talking about in one key here for a second but what if if we go into another key well the same thing it when everything's boiled down to two five one then life becomes much simpler as well when we're talking about momentary key changes. And please understand, I am not talking about jazz. I, it, jazz has way more momentary key changes in it than other styles of music. But we can go to the most basic rock stuff. find a one chord here, there, I mean, not a one chord, find one chord here or there that goes into another key. And I can give you hundreds of examples of that from music from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and in rock, in country, in every style, okay? So momentary key changes shouldn't, I, I those of you who know, <laughs> what I'm about a little bit. I always talk about this because after 40 years of having students, you know, uh, many of them going, oh no, don't don't teach me that chord because I'll become a, a bebop player. Uh, you know, this is reality. Momentary key changes, and, and that's the only way to say it. You know, it's, if we're in another key, we're in another key. So, uh, to some people, saying momentary key change, their eye glazes over and they go, oh, you're, you're talking about jazz. And no, no, it's, it's applicable to every style, okay? So, uh, <laughs> when we think in terms of everything being 251, momentary key changes don't scare us anymore. And so... Uh, as I said, when I was younger, I, I would uh, get these songbooks and find these arbitrary chords, and and it didn't mean anything to me, and uh, I so it became very frustrating, and I didn't want to get into harmony until I got with a great teacher who started to talk about chord families. So chord families uh, are just chord stacks, and family, I think, is really appropriate because... All the interior chord types, triads, four-part, five-part, six-part, seven-part chords, they're all become interchangeable, like, uh, like a family in a sense that all functions the same way. All the chords in the chord family function the same way in a key. And now I'm not going to talk about the different chords, you know, how they function. That's a real harmony lesson. But that's the idea of chord families. So once I started getting that nailed down, everything became clear. 
no matter how sophisticated or or not. Uh, and I, anybody can do that. It's not rocket science. You learn the chord families, and you can look at a big band chart or a film score or a, a funk thing with horns. You look at those chord, the chord progression, you know exactly what's going on. And, you know, in a, in a big band chart, you find things where there's a chord every eighth note. doesn't matter. I know what every one of those chords is, why they're there, what they're doing, how they function, what their scale source is, and you can do that too. You can do that too, in, and not in years. It, it takes some work, but it, it, a, a real year of studying, and you're done. You're done no matter what the style, no matter you know what the tune is, you'll never be confused again. But we're talking about plurality, and that's the step just before the chord families, okay? And we're gonna talk only about the major scale. When I say two, five, one, everything is two, five, one, I mean two, five, one in major or two, five, one in minor. But we're not gonna talk about two, five, one in minor because that's called altered harmony and that's that gets into a real barrel of gummy worms, okay? so. Let's take the major scale. We'll go C major scale. All right. We know uh, when we build uh, triads up from each note of the scale, etc. So we got major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, diminished. And it's all fine, right? It all works. There's no problem. I can do the same thing with four part. Major seven, minor seven, minor seven, major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, and minor seven flat five. Okay? And I, I'll, I'll just go back in, in my history again for a second. I remember when the teacher I had, that was as far as we went, it was four part. And and I was, you know, I'd come back a couple of weeks later, a couple of weeks later, later going... Okay, I'm ready to get into five part and six and seven part implied. And I I just, well, here's a major nine shape. You know, just another, it, that's arbitrary to me again. It's like, it's not, it's not systematic. Like we do this and we know, but you can't do that when it starts to get into five and six and seven part implied chords. And we're going to talk about why, because it's the most important thing to do with the major scale. Okay, so here's starting on C, and we're going to use all seven notes to build our chord stack. That's, that's what a chord family is, is using all seven notes of the major scale stacked in thirds on top of each other. Here's one, three, five, seven. 9, 11, 13. Okay? So if we put all those notes on top of each other, we'd end up with what would be considered a train wreck. Okay? And here's the reason why. Here's the root again. There's the third. E. Now if I continue on to the 11th, that's just the fourth, an octave higher. When that happens, this is the sound you get. This beautiful... Now, I've talked about this in other lessons. I'm going to try to come at it for some of you from a different point of view uh, and just get through it very quickly. But flat nine intervals, that's what that's called, a flat nine. Right, here's an octave. That's an eight. And then... If we went up to the next note, F or F sharp, that would be flat nine or a major nine. So this sound is not acceptable at any level in diatonic harmony, meaning within the major scale. Not in the one chord, not in the two chord, and not on the five chord. 
Now, for those of you who may know of, of chord types like G7 flat 9, that is not part of diatonic harmony. That's part of altered harmony. So flat 9 interval, no good under any conditions when we're talking about the major scale. And uh, unfortunately, we're going to find a, a few circumstances where that comes up, and we absolutely have to avoid it. And we'll just start with, have you ever seen a C major 11 chord? If you have, if somebody actually wrote that, they were either playing, <laughs> playing a prank on you or they don't understand harmony. There's no such thing as a C major 11 chord. Okay? Just, you'll never find it. If, if somebody tells you there is, they are wrong. This is it for the rest of your life. You can know there's no such thing as C major 11 chord, okay? So, what somebody did 50 years ago, 100 years ago, whenever it was, they said, well, uh, theoretically, all the notes of the chord should be able to be stacked and be used as resting tones when you improvise. But I'll tell you, and, and this is this will be proof of the pudding for you. If you, great rock players, great country players from the 60s and 70s, who some of them who had no harmony background at all, knew better than to use the fourth or the 11th as a resting tone. Their ear already told them, no. It's terrible. So you'd never hear them do it. Not only as a resting tone, but they wouldn't end a phrase that way. Because that accentuates this terrible sound. So the good old major scale isn't so good after all. It's, a, it's problematic. And we're going to get <clears throat> even farther into how how much of a problem it really is. So this has been the bane of my existence, is trying to teach beginning and intermediate uh, students who don't have a harmony background what should normally be the most basic, obvious idea is, hey, you take the C major scale, and you can build chords from the whole scale, and there's never going to be any problem. And it's the exact opposite. Out of nine different chord families, I think this one is the, the toughest to explain and to sell to uh, students because it uses two different scales. So you might say, well, if you got C major, can you use the C major scale to improvise over it? Yes. sit on the note F ever? No. F is what we call, or the fourth degree, is what has to be considered a passing tone. We don't sit on it. We move from one note to the next. That's what we mean by passing. <laughs> Just sort of a quick there and you're gone. Start on it, but you never sit on it. There it is. There's the sound. So we know whether um, doesn't matter stylistically. Again, we you know, we hear the greatest, especially country players. You never hear a great country player just sit on that. And <laughs> just really is terrible. So what happens is we came up with the idea, somebody did, of raising that note up a half step to half sharp. And that was a great idea. Now 
now we've got one, three, five, seven, nine, sharp 11, sharp means we're raising, right? Sharp 11, 13, beautiful. Every note's a resting tone now. It's a great target tone. Now, that may sound, for those of you who are not into jazz, that may sound pretty jazzy. But I'm going to tell you, there's, there's rock tunes that are just expressly using that sound. And I'm sure you can already tell just by that. Okay, so when we raise the four, that's called Lydian. You can put that in in your brain in the bank forever lydian means raised four or sharp 11 being the same note just up an octave lydian raised four always forever for the rest of your life that's all it means raised four okay so now when we have raised the fourth what happens is we have to change the scale that's not the C major scale anymore, is it? It's now C Lydian, which is the same thing as G major, right? G major has one sharp in it, F sharp. Well, that's the note we're talking about here, folks. So instead of this, we've got this. So, we don't have to use F sharp. It, again, we, we we're talking about if you want to use F, use the major scale, you can just use it as a passing tone. That's that sound. And with the sharp 11, that's that sound. So, it's not as huge a problem as it may seem, okay? But when we make a chord stack where we say, hey, can you rest on a note, on every note, theoretically? With Lydian, yes. Sounds great. So, this is, in, I did this as quickly as I could to, because it's so important uh, to the idea of plurality, okay? So now we realize there's two scales uh, that we have to deal with when we talk about the one chord in major, okay? Uh, now, uh, if we, remember I just said here, we can build triads up from the C major Scale, beautiful, no problem. And then four part, same thing. When we get to five part, let's, let's try that building a chord off the, the third note of the major scale. Here's E, G, B, D. There's E minor seven. Everything's great, no problem. So we want to go to a five part chord and now we've got F and there's that sound again. Okay, so this is where a lot of, I'm, I'm not trying to put anybody down or anything, where a lot of teachers sort of stop, you know, and, and they haven't gone through like I said, the deep dive into the major scale. And, and so you're sort of left not really getting it, not really understanding what's going on. So there's no such thing as an E minor flat, E minor seven flat nine chord. It's not available and it shouldn't be. It sounds bad. So what we do 
when we say, okay, well, there's a there's such a thing as a three chord. Yes, there is, but it can only be four parts at its very best. So what we do in plurality, we say something different. We say E minor seven. If you put a C in the bass, that's the upper extension of C major nine, okay? E minor seven, C in the bass, and that's plurality. That's plurality, okay? E minor seven with a C in the bass equals C major nine. So does it mean we can't go to a three chord? No, it just means the way you think of it is as a, uh, you think of it in a different way. And that way, again, everything boils down to two, five, one, which simplifies our world in order to improvise uh, and, and to use our, our thinking during improvisation in a different way, in a better way, in a more useful way. Okay? So, three chord, upper extension of a one. Okay? And that's good, because as I said, what we can't go any farther than a four-part chord. So that doesn't, that, a three chord doesn't stand up when you put all seven notes on top of each other. Like it didn't stand up with C major. It doesn't stand up with E minor. I'm sorry. Uh, it, and there's actually something worse than that. There's two flat nine intervals. But we don't even need to get go there. We know the three chord doesn't work as a chord stack past four, uh, four part, okay? So that takes us then to some other chords. We talked about the three chord. Uh, let's talk about the six chord, A minor in the key of C. So A minor triad's great. A minor seven's great. And, and actually everything works out fine until you get to the the seventh, and there it is again, okay? Now, I just want you to think about this for a second. If we say uh, C major six, that's a, a one chord, C, E, G, A, beautiful. Well, A minor seven, wait a minute, A, C, E, G, those are the, those are the exact same notes so many people would say this, A minor 7, is a direct substitute, an inversion, which it really is, of C6. So the 6 chord, again, it's thought of as a plur what we call a plural substitute for the 1 chord. So let me give you an example. Do we hear, we've got F, four chord, five to one. How many times have we heard this? Well, that's just, that's just the basis for about a billion tunes. Right? Rock tune after rock tune, but all the way up to film scores, you hear this. You know, with strings. So it's very, very common. What's happening is we're replacing the one chord with the six, and now we've got a, it's just a different sound, isn't it? We've got a different bass tone, okay? And it's very cool, that works. So, when I see that on a progression, it doesn't matter if it's in the key of C or any other key, I automatically know what's going on. This is, we're actually, this is the relative minor, isn't it? A minor seven. So we can think that way and just say, okay, four, five, uh, one in minor. 
Okay, which we're gonna we're gonna talk about that because that is the real the real reason I'm doing this video is to talk to you about uh, the idea of two scales that we talked about with the C major uh, with the one chord in C. Uh, so just to finish it off, I'll just we'll just look at it this way: the four chord is considered the upper extension of a two. If I play uh, F major triad and put a D in the bass, F minor 7. If I do that with F major 7, there's D minor 9. So there's plurality in, in force again. F major over D equals D minor 7. So a four chord is a plural substitute for two. Okay? Once you accept these things, it, it's not a big deal. We're not saying there's no such thing as four, five, one, or any of that stuff. You know, four, five, one is the, is the foundation of, of country, of rock, of blues. So I get that. But this this way is going to simplify everything for you when it starts to get a little tougher and we start to get out of the the key that we're in the, and get into momentary key changes. Okay? So, three, the three chord, upper extension of a one chord. The six chord, a, a direct replacement or plural substitute for one. Both of those are plural subs for one. F major, you know, four chord, plural substitute for two. And last but not least is the, the seven chord, which is minor seven flat five. And, and of course, you know, it's going to have the same problems as you move up to the next note, the next note. So, uh, where we're going to find that flat nine interval. So this, and many of you may already know this because it's sort of common, this is the upper extension of a five chord. Seven for five. Seven is a plural substitute for five. There's G9, right? And if you uh, decide to get into advanced harmony, that concept becomes so huge in, in this uh, context, in, in the world of the five chord, okay? Okay, so there we go. Three and six, plural subs for one. Four chord, a plural substitute for two. And a seven chord is a plural substitute for five chord, for dominant chord. Okay. Now, this is the last thing I just want to get into. I know it's a, a lot to take in, especially if you're more of a, of a beginner. But I wanted to talk about the relative minor, which we did a little bit here, right? I said, hey, this... We've heard this forever. Great. Four, five, six. But we we say the six chord is my is a minor seven chord. Remember we said that's a, a a plural substitute for one, but when we're when this is home base and now we're in minor four five six relative minor, we can use one of two scales, just like we can do with the uh, with the real one chord. I can use the F natural as a passing tone. I can use F sharp as a resting tone. Well, the 
the same exact thing works for the six. There's F. So I've got this A. We never rest on the note F because we end up with that. But just like with C major, we can use it as a passing tone. Or we can use F sharp. And we can use it as a resting tone. And it's a cool sound, especially coming from here. Like you're using F major, and then you get to A minor, and then you change it up. It's its own really unique sound. But what happens when we change that to F sharp? And, and A minor, we're in A minor now? Well, that note means we're playing the scale G major again. A is in the bass, that's A Dorian. Okay? Now, this, you it takes some work, and I would, you know, write these things out and look at them and, and really uh, get into it. Like I said, a deep dive. But what you'll find out is that A Dorian and C Lydian are the exact same scale, G major. That's that's it. So if I go four, five, one, I can use C major or or C Lydian, which is G major. If I go four, five, one in minor, I can use C major or A natural minor or A Dorian, which is G major. Dorian. That's natural minor or aeolian. Okay? It is, it's so important to, to understand this, the, the two scale uh, aspect of, of this and uh, understand that the major scale is not an end all. It has some real problems to it. And what I've just given you is a way to understand how we get rid of those problems forever. So there's a lot of things you're just, you're not going to see a C major, uh, a, a, a C major 11 chord. You're not going to see an E minor 7 flat 9 chord. And and there's some other rules, like with the five chord. If you've got G11, you can never play the third because of that flat nine. So this may be technically difficult for you right now. Take your time with it. Explore. Explore the major scale. Build the seven part chord, seven part chords up from each note. And you'll start to recognize instantly, where is that note F above E? Where, in other cases, where is the note C above B? That's another flat nine interval you'll find in the major scale. And we have to avoid those. There's no getting away from it. And when you start to look at song after song, regardless of the style, you'll see those chords don't exist. They're not there. And you have to ask yourself why. And so if, if I have something that's going two, five, one, and then it goes two, five, three, I don't care. It's all C major to me. And I just, I don't, I don't sit on the note F. Right? So, uh, 
I hope that helps and it, it, it clears things up instead of making it worse. But this is something you can't get away from. And the sooner you get it, uh, the better everything else is going to be uh, uh, in, in terms of, and again, any style of music, you're going to see uh, what you can do uh, when, when you see like C major 7 in a songbook. Then you say, oh, I can, I can play C major 7, or I can play C major 9, or C major 6, 9. And, but if I, have to, if I want to put the 11th in, I know what I got to do now. If I want to play C major 9 sharp 11, that's what it's got to be. It can't be C major 11. All right. So that's, that's the real work. And you can spend a few weeks easily just going through this stuff. But it's worth every ounce of your time. And once you've got that nailed down, you've got the preface for looking at every chord family. And like I said, in a year, even less, you could know how every song, you'd be able to justify every chord and uh, in any song, in any style. Okay, folks, hope that helps. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.